the hello i thank the organizers of uh, ama kodapakkam for giving me this uh, opportunity and uh, i'm going to talk to you about uh, an important uh, problem which we normally have in our day to day practice which is uh, joint pain and uh, i'm going to talk to you about osteoarthritis and uh, the management management strategies we all know that uh, mobility is important for life the ancient history uh, tells us that uh, osteoarthritis is as old as uh, any any the disease the oldest disease known on the planet and uh, until now we haven't actually found a proper cure or proper uh, treatment for this problem the prevalence of osteoarthritis is ever increasing if we take this study which was done recently comparing the early industrial era and post industrial era there is two fold increase in the incidence of uh, osteoarthritis come go back and by definition osteoarthritis there is a gradual loss of articular cartilage and there is uh, associated with subchondral sclerosis and bony outgrowth which is called as osteophytes <coughs> and uh, there is also associated synovial inflammation so this is what we see in a case of osteoarthritis and commonly it affects the weight bearing joint as you all know mainly the hip knee foot ankle and the hand is an exception anyway but commonly in our country we see knee arthritis more than any other joint involved the causes of uh, the arthritis is multifactorial aging is one of the cause which is uh, implicated and uh, race is more common in african americans and also in asians compared to caucasians and uh, it is more common in females compared to male population and increasing in bmi also increases the incidence of osteoarthritis if somebody is overweight there is an increased chance of osteoarthritis and this also has a high genetic predisposition so it can run in families too and nutritional deficiency of uh, vitamin d vitamin c and k and calcium have all been implicated in the causation of osteoarthritis secondary osteoarthritis is occurs because of injury to the joint with the fractures or following inflammatory arthritis or metabolic or endocrine disorders can also cause osteoarthritis what happens in osteoarthritis is there is a damage to the articular cartilage basically the cartilage is made up of hyaline cartilage and if there is a damage to the articular cartilage it initiates the pathogenesis of osteoarthritis so whenever there is an injury to the articular cartilage the body controls by doing a self repair but this self repair mechanism declines over a period of, uh, over, the, over the ages several ages as the age, aging goes on so that leads to osteoarthritis in the older people and this can also be uh, compounded by the malalignment of the bones because of the genetic and pathological reasons and as i already mentioned bmi is an important factor and also the other, other factors like muscle weakness because when there is a loss of supporting muscle around the joint there is excessive damage occurring in the articular cartilage and that can lead to osteoarthritis and peripheral neuropathy where there is a loss of proprioception there there also there is increased destruction of joint leading to osteoarthritis so uh, this is the the pathology in nutshell where you can see many problems here this there is thickening of the synovial membrane capsule and destruction of the articular cartilage subchondral sclerosis and subchondral cyst formation so this is the the pathology of osteoarthritis the pain is an important symptom in osteoarthritis early early arthritis uh, in a, the symptoms are very mild patients will have only stiffness when they get up from sitting position for a long time or getting up in the morning and it eases when they start to walk the severity of the pain increases over a 
uh, as the disease progresses, it can also increase because of episodic inflammation or a twisting type of injury can aggravate sudden increase in the pain. It can also lead to disturbance in sleep and patients will have limitation of normal activities. So that leads to emotional distress for the patient. When we examine the patient, we notice swelling of the joint, sometimes deformities and the limitation of movements and associated with crepitus when we move the joint. We do a blood test uh, only to rule out the other possibilities like rheumatoid. And of course, we do x-rays of the joints, affected joints. MRI is not routinely required in osteoarthritis. And we use this grading, calgaran lorentz classification. Grade 1 is uh, presence of minute osteophyte, otherwise normal. Grade 2 is definite osteophyte with normal joint space. And grade 3 is joint space narrowing. And grade 4, joint space narrowing with subchondral sclerosis and osteophyte formation. So the treatment is basically based on this classification. So what the most important message which you should uh, have at the patient is that the arthritis is not curable by any methods possible. So whatever treatment available is only the control of symptoms and to improve the function of the patients. We can try and prevent osteoarthritis by avoiding uh, deficiency factors like calcium and vitamin D, taking calcium and vitamin D rich diets, and maintaining the body weight, and using proper shoes when we are running and doing some regular exercise. Of course, they all help in preventing to some extent. This is the treatment pyramid for osteoarthritis. Starting from the base, mild osteoarthritis. The treatment is basically patient education, modification of function, weight reduction and physical therapy. So if you educate the patient, that itself will relieve most of the patient's symptoms. Isometric and isokinetic exercise can sometimes be helpful and along with functional and gait balance training exercises. Use of braces also improve pain in osteoarthritis, especially in early arthritis and sometimes we use in severe arthritis when the patient is not fit for surgery. The medications which we commonly use is paracetamol, which is the workhorse of uh, uh, painkillers in osteoarthritis. And NSAIDs can be used, but only for a shorter duration because of its uh, side effects, as you all know. And it can be useful in episodic uh, episodes of inflammation in osteoarthritis. And nowadays there are some non-NSAIDs which are available in the market, uh, like uh, COX inhibitors or uh, other medications which can also be used as an interim treatment. But they are not uh, given; they should not be given on a permanent basis. There are other drugs which are available like glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate, diacerin, collagen peptides. But these drugs sometimes they do not uh, help in the treatment of osteoarthritis much and they are more considered as a placebo rather than a disease modulators. And when the disease goes on to the next stage which is a moderate phase, injection therapy is useful. And the following injection is used, they are corticosteroids. Commonly used viscous supplementation and PRP platelet rich plasma and BMAC bone uh, marrow aspirin concentrate injections. These are the different type of injections which we commonly use. Corticosteroid has been widely been used for several decades. The literature evidence which are available are largely anecdotal. The action of uh, corticosteroid is basically anti-inflammatory immunosuppression effects. It also reduces vascular permeability and it decreases the erythema and tenderness of the affected joint. So basically it, is, it will improve the symptoms of the patient and this injection is certainly be helpful in, at times of uh, inflammation which you can have in osteoarthritis on and off. Two type of preparations are available, depot preparation and water soluble preparation. Depot preparation is commonly used because they stay inside the joint for a long time. So commonly we use methyl prednisolone and triamcelone. Water soluble preparation, they diffuse across the joint into the body, so they will have systemic effects. So this, uh, water soluble preparations are basically discouraged. The studies 
from uh, the meta-analysis of uh, the use of cardiac steroids, they show a significant pain reduction at two weeks up to maximum of 12 weeks. And basically, the cardiac steroid is considered as a short-term treatment for a long-term problem. Viscose supplementation basically we use hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is nothing but a glycosidin or glycans polysaccharide, which is normally present in our cellular fluid and cartilage matrix. In osteoarthritis, the concentration of the hyaluronic acid is less, and the quality, the concentration of the quality of the hyaluronic acid is less. So what we try to do is to we improve this uh, concentration of uh, HA, 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 using HA preparations. The HA preparations are two types, mainly it's coming from the animal sources and also it comes from uh, non-animal sources which is uh, bacterial fermentation. So basically uh, these uh, injections, they temporarily restore the lubrication and improve the shock absorbing effects of the cyanamyl fluid. And biochemically they inhibit the matrix metalloproteinases, which is an important enzyme which causes uh, cartilage degradation. So it inhibits cartilage degradation, it stimulates cartilage matrix synthesis and also it protects against oxygen-free radicals damage. HA preparation uh, comes in different molecular weights, uh, but uh, the most favorable ones are the high molecular weights because uh, the molecular weight of a uh, synovial fluid is uh, 6 daltons, which is a high molecular weight. So we try to uh, use the same uh, molecular weight uh, preparations. The injections are given at a frequency from 1 injection to 3 injections. And uh, the complications are very rare. Very rarely we see uh, pseudoseptic reactions following injections of uh, hyaluronic acid. A systematic review, uh, there are many papers. One such paper shows uh, there is improvement in pain and function in 60% of people. And the benefits are longer compared to the use of corticosteroids. And the efficacy actually goes up to 24 weeks. In corticosteroids, we see the efficacy only up to 12 weeks. But in hyaluronic acid, we see up to 24 weeks post-injection. And it has got relatively few side effects. The meta-analysis also has a favorable effect of hyaluronic acid injection and uh, the, it has got uh, an efficacy by 4 weeks and peak eff effectiveness by 8 weeks and residual uh, effectiveness at 24 weeks. This study compares between corticosteroids and hyaluronic acid. It's a randomized single blind study uh, by Cabon et al. in 2004 uh, which says that uh, the HA is significantly better in terms of uh, pain relief beyond 12 weeks up to 24 weeks. Uh, now the uh, most of the degenerative condition there is uh, certainly no cure and what uh, the recent research uh, they try to uh, manage this problem by using biological methods. One such biological method is platelet rich plasma and this platelet rich plasma we actually isolated from our peripheral blood. And basically the alpha granules of the platelet which contains its growth factors and immune system messengers, they help in the, the regener cartilage regeneration. And the PRP injection has been already been used in tendinopathies, muscle injuries and articular repair. And the harvesting of this is very simple. We take the peripheral blood and spin it around for 10 minutes and we get the PRP injection and we give it into the joint. There are several preparations which they vary in uh, the volume, the rate of uh, delivery and uh, WPC concentration. Safety is not a major concern with uh, uh, this injection. A few contraindications, which is thrombocytopenia, anticoagulants, active infection, tumor, and pregnancy. So PRP functions as an increasing the bioactive factors inside the joint. It stimulates tendon healing. It increases the collagen gene expression. It stimulates type 1 collagen, basically. It acts as a biological mediator. There are some studies which favor the results of PRP. Uh, the effect of PRP lasts more than 6 months, that's what the, uh, the clinical studies show. So PRP is better than HA in young patients with less severe OA. And PRP and HA have been shown to be uh, improved, shown improvement in patients over 50 years and in early OA. This uh, level 1 RCT also climbs into the same. The effectiveness of the PRP is maintained up to 12 months. The next one is the, the bone marrow aspirin concentrate. The source of this uh, is basically we take it from the iliac crest and we spin it around and we get this bone marrow aspirin. Basically this consists of mononuclear cells 
which are capable of clonal expression and differentiation to various cell types. And it has got anti-inflammatory properties, and it also has the growth factors as uh, platelets, but uh, it, uh, it has BMP2 and BMP7 in addition. The literature also, uh, in, uh, comparing the uh, use of uh, the Baymac in osteoarthritis, shows encouraging results so far. So the injections, uh, what are the indications? Corticosteroid is given in acute situations when the patient is having cyanobitis, and HA injections are preferable in mild to moderate OA, if it is grade 2 and grade 3, but not for grade 4. PRP injections are useful in younger patients with mild or moderate osteoarthritis. After the severe osteoarthritis, the treatment is mainly surgical. There are different options available. One is arthroscopic surgery, and uh, several decades of uh, arthroscopic surgery have been used for osteoarthritis. But after this paper, which is a landmark paper in 2008, it showed that osteo uh, arthroscopic surgery is of no benefit at all. And osteotomy can be done.